All right. We have the basic info. We've done the key knowledge points. And now we will be analyzing the scores. When you look at all of the past paper data from 2010 all the way through 2020. And you look at the percentage of accuracy that was obtained at each question. For example, in 2010, for question one, 94% of the people got it correct. Then you have that through all of the years. Obviously, you can see a bunch of green, which is good accuracy on average. And then it slowly tones down to red, which is obviously the most difficult questions. And yes, it is obvious that the exam progresses in difficulty. So two important things about that. As I mentioned earlier, this is not like Math Kangaroo. You cannot just speed through the first few questions. In fact, your exam is going to be made or made or broken uh, on through the first 15 questions, right? Because they're easier and there's still one point. So you need to make sure first 15 are all correct. Uh, if that's possible, that should be your first target. Second thing, as you can notice, the exams are not, they're not 100%. The most difficult question will be in the end. Um, that is the case in Math Kangaroo and other elementary school examinations. However, for AMC 8, they'll throw you a curveball sometimes. The most difficult questions in red, which is less than 20% of the students got it right, are actually sometimes thrown in the middle, typically around question 15. And broadly speaking, they are shown in the last five. So if you look at questions 20 through 25, the difficult, the most difficult questions will show up within that range. So do not go into the test thinking of a basic idea of, oh, okay, I, I know 25th question is going to be the hardest. Uh, my strategy is, say, I, I'm, I'm hard on time. I want to make sure I get everything accurate in the beginning. So I'm going to take my time when I'm at question 20. Because if you look at the data, you might be in a situation where question 20 is the most difficult question on the examination, right? Let's look at, for example, 2011. Question 23 was the most difficult. The last question was not even at a medium level. That was in the yellow, right? That was upper medium in terms of the difficulty. So don't think, okay, let me just skip the last few or any of those. If you're going for a very niche strategy, you need to raise the red flag as soon as you enter question 20. So questions progressively increase in difficulty and don't just assume when you're basing your strategy off the last few questions. When you look at the average score uh, and the rate of questions from one to 25 across the past 11 years, you will see three things. For you to excel in these questions, and I've listed all of the questions from one through 25, I've categorized uh, two through six as the easy ones, seven to 15 as mid-tier, and 16 to 25 as the high difficulty. If you look at these questions, uh, there are certain trends in that the difficulty level is consistent in these groups. The first category, the simple questions, you need a solid foundation at school. This is your in-school work. Are you at a 100% level with your foundations? For seven through 15, however, you need external help. Now that doesn't mean you have to go to an, an advancement academy such as Think Academy or whatnot. Whatever method you're using, good, well and good. There's plenty of resources, but make sure you do more than just what the school is providing you because there are plenty of techniques, uh, strategies that you will need to know to solve specific problems. For example, when I was looking at word problems and one of the most uh, popular questions, I gave an example of sports competitions. This is not something that's going to be covered in school. And out of the last eight years, approximately six questions popped up, right? Or even more. So you need to have techniques outside of school, do it online, do it through a teacher, whatever you're doing, you need to work beyond school. 16 through 25 does demand an innate ability uh, or a high sense of logical reasoning. So that doesn't mean that all is doom and gloom. Of course, everything can be worked on, uh, especially if you're weak for the harder questions, you need to practice, 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 because this is something that's on yourself. First category is on the school. Second one is external. And the third one is just by yourself. So when we look at 
the easy questions. As I said, I've categorized simple, medium, and difficult, and I'll give you tips based on that. For simple questions, like I said, your focus needs to be to ace all of them, right? Everyone's one point, everyone is the same weight. More than 60% of the students get it correct. 18% of the past paper questions are categorized as simple, right? That amounts to about four to five questions on average belong to the simple questions, specifically numbers and operations or word problems. For you to ace this, there's no need to spend extra time. Past paper questions will suffice. You don't have to do anything more than that. As long as you cover the past papers, you'll be done with the, the simple questions. And aim for 100% accuracy on numbers and operations and word problems. These are simple questions to get. Each question needs to be taken with respect. Ace the easy questions. Let's go on to the middle questions, the mid-tier. 20 to 60% of the students will get this correct, which amounts to about 185 questions in the past 275 if you look at the last 11 years. So approximately 67% has, has fallen in the mid-tier category. So again, with a heavier proportion of word problems and geometry. The best thing I can tell you for this is that because it's so evenly distributed in terms of the modules and the knowledge points you need to know, you have to understand every module. The problem is that uh, some parents, unfortunately, uh, strategize pretty, uh, I would say pretty carelessly on this test. Uh, they employ these bizarre strategies that they think because they're so bizarre, like it may be a high risk, high reward situation, I guess, but they're not, they're just not. Uh, for example, if you're at grade five, you want to make sure you are acing the test at grade five. That's your goal. Given that goal, you say, okay, let me skip combinations, right? Grade five, it's a little difficult to do combinatorics. That is not going to work out right? Let me, speak, let me uh, skip counting and statistics. Every module, just because I've given you percentage, doesn't mean that it doesn't showcase itself in another module, right? This isn't like, okay, it is going to be based on ge uh, geometry, so it's only going to be geometry. Nope, you're going to have sequence and series inside. You're going to have pattern recognition inside. You're going to have an element of logical reasoning inside. So for medium questions, do not just skip a module. Make sure you cover all your bases. Right, and when you look at the difficult questions, under 20% get it correct. 40 in the past 11 years, which averages about the three to five questions per test. Geometry will make up the largest proportion for the difficult questions. Why? Because they are flexible and strategic, right? You, you need to be having this sense of flexibility and strategy when you're doing these questions. You cannot have to set one method that you use for every difficult question. You cannot say, okay, I'm going to trial and error. Let me reverse engineer this problem, see what works. It's worked for me in the medium questions. It's going to work again. No, every question has a different technique, a different strategy. So be prepared to use a bunch of different methods that you've employed in your practice, hopefully, so you can ace these questions. Now, when you look at uh, the Think Academy curriculum versus the AMC-8. Of course, for the students, for the parents who are at the Academy and attending this webinar, uh, no need to fear. Um, although the curriculum, as you know, doesn't really like prepare them for a competition because it's oriented towards heavy logic and heavy problem solving questions, they'll be naturally prepared. We don't just shove them in middle school. They're organically uh, prepared first the foundations. So you'll see two modules in grade two, six in grade three, 12 in grade four. And by the time they reach grade five, they only have four left and they're pretty much prepared to do the test. Like I said, we're really proud of this number. Um, four out of the global eight students in the achievement role have been from Think Academy, including the youngest student in the world at grade one.